Today is the summer solstice, the official start of summer for those uh, of us in the northern hemisphere and the longest day of the year. The sun is getting ready for its own kind of increased activity. And so here to talk about all the interesting things happening for our star is NASA expert Michael Kirk. And today is the summer solstice. So Michael, what does that mean? Yeah, so the summer solstice is when the angle of the Earth's rotation axis is tipped towards the sun. So we're, we're tipped about by about 20, 23 and a half degrees. And in the Northern hemisphere, we're tipped towards the sun in June and then away from the sun in December. And that's what causes the summer and the winter solstices. Great answer. Well, I know people are really, really curious about that. So amazing to hear that. NASA has some big plans to celebrate our sun in the coming year. What makes this such an exciting time for our sun? This next year is a heliophysics big year. This is not just one 12 month period, it's even longer because it's such a, a uh, event packed year. So kicking things off, we have the annular solar eclipse happening in October of this year. And then we're going to keep things going with a total solar eclipse in April of next year that's gonna sweep through the center of the United States. And then finally, we're gonna have humanity's closest approach to the sun ever before with Parker Solar Probe's perihelion that's going to hit in December of 2024. It's going to be an amazing year and we want to. Oh yeah. Well, you mentioned the sun getting more active and I guess my question to you is how does that impact us? Yeah, so the sun is goes through a cycle. So every uh, about 12 years. So it, in, in, it starts off kind of quiet, not much happening. And then it turns into a more active sun where there's more sunspots and eruptions and solar flares and more space weather. It's material getting ejected off the space and off, uh, off the sun into space and streaming through the environment and actually impacting Earth. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, I don't go into space very often. You know, I, I haven't been to space in months, maybe. Um, but what we are as a civilization, we are a space faring civilization. We depend on space for every day. I used my GPS to get here today, and that depends on signals coming from space through the ionosphere and, and going to my phone. If the sun and space weather is more active, it can disrupt those signals. And so you think you're you're going to, uh, you know, go straight through this light and, it, and the GPS is saying that you're, you know, six blocks to the left. All right. Well, in the next year, not just one, but two solar eclipses are going to cross the United States, which I think is phenomenal. But when are those happening and what science does NASA do during an eclipse? So yeah, you're right. There's two solar eclipses happening. Solar eclipses are relatively rare in the United States. They don't happen that often, but we have treated to two coming up. October 18th of this year, we're gonna have an annular solar eclipse where there's an annulus of sun, a little ring of fire that's peeking out. That starts in Oregon, sweeps down through the desert Southwest and um, Texas, and then out over the Caribbean into South America. Then in April 8th, 2024, mark your calendars now. This is the main event. This is a total solar eclipse. If you remember 2017, we had a similar event. This one is going to sweep up from Mexico into South Texas, then across the uh, Mississippi River Valley, up into the Ohio River Valley, Great Lakes, and out through Canada. This total solar eclipse is one of the most spectacular things you can ever see with your own eyes. I would highly recommend making a trip to the path of totality if you can. Um, NASA is also interested in science. What we can do is use this as a natural experiment to just switch off the sun for a few seconds. So the sun is blocked by the moon, and by when it's blocked, we are able to see the outer uh, corona of the sun, the outer atmosphere of the sun, and do some deep studies of that, and then see what the effects are on the Earth's atmosphere and watch as it, the sun disappears and then comes back again and how that atmosphere adjusts and changes. All right, well, let me ask you this. Where can people go to enjoy the fun and kind of celebrate these, this all happening? Yeah, so the, the Heliophysics Big Year is really a big year for all of us. Um, and so you can go to go.nasa.gov slash Helio Big Year to find out all of the information you need about the solar eclipses, about citizen science, about outreach activities, and um, just stay up to date on all the latest that's happening on NASA science as well. All right, Michael Kirk, thank you so much. What good information, and we're just so glad to have you on. So thanks again. Great, thank you so much. Happy to do it.